guitar effect. My name's Rob. This evening we're going to be taking a look at the Cox Studio Tone 20 amplifier. But before we do, I'll ask you to please like and subscribe so you can catch up to date with everything we're doing here at the Guitar Effect. <clears throat> so, why the Cox Studio 20 Live? Um, a while ago, before lockdown, um, my band Kampala was playing some shows uh, around Dublin City and there was a couple where I went to where there was a house cab and a head. So it was an orange 4x12 cab and an orange micro, no not micro terror, dark terror. Dual terror, sorry, an orange dual terror head. Actually, I think one of the music stores is supplying some of the venues in Dublin with good gear and orange seems to be um, what's being used. I'm not a fan of orange amps, never have been. Um, they're too fizzy for me. Um, and I don't like the clean sound off them. And most of what I do is clean sound as a basis with then pedals for flavour. So I decided I'd try and look for a lunchbox amp and so I started looking around and I came across I came across this amp, the Cox Studio Tone 20, in a local music store for four hundred euro used, which was an absolute steal. I just looked yesterday and I'm told them they're like eight hundred and ninety five euro or something like that. Absolute steal. It's mint. Um and it's working perfectly and there's loads of life left in the tubes. It's just a brilliant amplifier. The reason that I'm making a video about it tonight is I'm sure that, especially in the current situation, there's a lot of people in a similar situation to me where you're making a lot of either just playing music at home, maybe you're making videos, whatever you need to do, maybe you're just recording guitar for that purpose where you're trying to do anything silently and you don't want to use a modeler. I don't want to use a modeler. I want to use a tube amp and I want to use it with knobs that I can turn to change things and I want it here beside me. I don't want it on the ground. I don't want to use it. I mean, I have um, Amplitude, which I use sometimes. And I actually think the Logic guitar amps are very, very useful too. But I, for recording guitar, I want to commit to my tone of a small pedal board on the floor. And I have my amplifier here beside me. And I have a rack of guitars behind me to get whatever tone I want. And rather than record a guitar and change it after the fact, like pick my amp and pick my pedals or whatever in software, I much prefer to record using a pedals and an amplifier and commit to the sound that I'm recording to tape. So I came across this amplifier three months ago and it's been a bit of a revelation really, as in it's just set up, it seems absolutely perfectly to do what I wanted to do. So a little bit about it. Um, it's 20 watts, it's two EL84s and I think a 12AX7 in the preamp I'm assuming. Um, it has three channels. It has a clean, a dirty, and like a lead channel. Um, they all have shared EQ, and the dirty and lead channel have shared volume and gain, and there's like a, a gain boost with three separate levels. I'll go through all that. Um, so basically, it's a three-channel Marshall-style amp. There's a Marshall-style clean sound, a Marshall drive sound, and a Marshall-style lead sound. It's, built, it's obviously being cock and being German, it's built to very, very, very high standards. It, it is for all intents and purposes a boutique amp, although I don't really associate boutique amps with like channel switching and stuff like that and like, you know, loads of features. It's a very, very heavily featured amp. Um, and the reason that it's so good for this is because two things in particular, it has a emulated output on the back that has a really, really good sound and you can select between a one by 12 and a four by 12 and either off axis or on axis. But it also right beside that has a completely unemulated line output. From the preamp so what that allows you to do in effect is simultaneously take which i'm doing this evening by the way simultaneously take the emulated speaker out which i have selected to the 112 on axis but also run a di which you can then put an imp impulse response on afterwards which is just super mega versatile and it allows me maybe to have one committed tone then if i want to tweak something i can change a cab i'm not changing like the distortion sensor and that but i can change the cab which can fairly dramatically affect the sound after the fact and this setup allows me to do that so it's an absolutely amazing piece of kit and i'm going to go through it now so let's get started okay so as you can see this evening i'm playing my 1960s reissue fender telly it's a mexican telly i think it's about maybe six or seven years old maybe a bit older i'm not sure in vintage white and uh, with a mint pick guard and rosewood fretboard it's got the stock pickups in it and it sounds pretty cool. It sounds like a telly. Um, this evening, because I'm demoing the amp, I'm not going into the pedal board at all, although I do have my Milos Popovich delay 
analog delay with modulation in the effects loop. Um, and as you can see uh, in the amp, everything is just set to noon. I'm on the clean channel. There are two switches here. There's a mid shift and there's also a bright switch. And the bright switch is in the middle position, which is kind of neutral and the mid shift is off. So this is playing the telly straight into the clean channel with everything at noon. <laughs> And as you can see, there's an onboard actual spring reverb, which is really, really cool. So, um, so let's have, have a listen to the clean channel. <laughs> Following actually um, Rhett Schull's instruction in one of his videos recently, I've taken to doing this thing where I dial everything in. So on the clean channel, one by one, I'm going to bring in these controls until I feel like I have them where I want them. So starting with the gain, which in this case is just called the clean volume. The gain on the clean channel. Yep. Um, the gain and volume here are for the overdrive channel. So I'll come to them when I'm doing the overdrive channel. So the bass, and I'll wind the bass all the way off. Maybe in kind of typical Marches style, it's not the most active EQ. Apologies for the paint on my hands, folks, by the way, I was painting my house today. Um, yeah, so there is the, the clean channel. So as you can see, when you bring the gain up past noon, it, it, it's still, that's still completely clean. It's just got beautiful sort of attitude and, um, you know, maybe starting to mildly compress in a really pleasing way. You can roll the tone off a little bit. So, um, that's the clean channel and at the end of the video I'll just demonstrate the difference between the DI with a with a cab sim on and then the emulated out and um, incidentally I'm running both into line inputs on the back of my interface and um, so the bright switch so the, this is the, the tone knob full on on the clean channel taking the bright switch from the, the kind of normal position to the off position so this doesn't sound at home quite a lot. So that's with the bright switch, like, minus, if you will. And this is with the bright switch in the normal position. Normal. Bright cut. Which I think for a single coil guitar, actually, you know, if you, it really makes it more palatable. So here's a bright setting. So it's getting a little bit ice picky, but in fairness, I'm playing Telecaster with the tone knob on full. It's a very, very bright guitar. Um, but if I don't hit the strings particularly hard, it's still quite pleasant. It's only when I dig in that top end comes out. Um, I'll grab a Les Paul at the end of the video maybe and just go through to show how the Les Paul does benefit somewhat if it's a dull Les Paul from the brightness switch. But generally I leave the brightness switch in the middle. So uh, the other thing then is a mid shift. Mid shift off. It's not massively noticeable there. Mid shift on, mid shift off. Just bring a bit of mid in alright. So that is the clean channel with all the different EQ options. Generally, like I said, I stay in the I stay in the mid position on the bright switch and I leave the mid boost off. Which I find find and I, with the gain up at around just about two o'clock it starts to really have and I present quite a nice 
pleasant quality about it. If I bring the gain up to 10, wind the, wind the tone back a little bit. I think it, um, it starts to get, it's noisy as you can hear, but uh, it's almost plexi-like. <laughs> It's a really, really pleasant sound. So, we go over then to the overdrive channel. So it's two overdrive channels. This is the regular overdrive channel. There's OD and OD plus. So this is the first stage of overdrive. Just to match that a little bit with the clean channel. almost kind of picks up where that clean channel left off with the gain and straight up. It's getting a bit noisy with single coils. Again. fluff there so yeah as you can see it's just a brilliant Marshall style overdrive and um, that's with the gain there at uh, nine o'clock so pushing the gain and full on the um <laughs> That's all just with the volume knob on the guitar. Um, okay, so that covers off the dirty channel and then we go on to the OD plus. And this is, I think for all intents and purposes, is meant to be the lead channel. So, so interestingly, this channel has three modes. It has L, M and H, which I'm assuming mean low, medium and high. So low, with the guitar's volume and tone on full.
which is definitely at a lower gain setting than the full setting on the previous channel. Then medium gain, you can hear even in, in my, I can hear my earphones it just getting a little bit more fr in front there. It's still like, even though, you know, it's, it's, a, it's effectively a high gain distortion sound. It's so amp like, I know that it is an amp, but it's, you know, it's going through an, an emulator output and it's really responsive and feels just great. Like. <laughs> But as I mentioned, this probably is meant for lead. So here is the H setting. So this is the highest gain setting. I'm on a bit of a Pearl Jam bus this evening. So, to play some lead parts on it. I mean, it's still not singing. I'm going to boost the gain up to 9 o'clock. Starting to sing there. It's very noisy. Isn't it? This is a low output single coil guitar. So I think if I bring the game back to generally, I keep the game this amp uh, exactly straight up at noon. So I'm thinking. Okay, I'll grab the Les Paul at the end of this video and just see what what a difference that makes. But with low output pickups, it only starts to get really singing and creamy with the gain up at around nine o'clock on the lead channel. So I'll just um, so just take a quick listen to the reverb. I'm actually going to go over to the dirty channel. So here is reverb um, at nine o'clock. You can hear it is springy, but it's not much of it there. So when I bring it up to 12 o'clock. I mean, that reverb is definitely good enough to stop me from needing to have a dedicated, like, ambient always on reverb on my board um, in fact i don't have a reverb on my board for recording if i want to use a big reverb i'll probably just use something in a doll i use the more delay i'm more of a delay kind of person than reverb so the uh, reverb at three o'clock <laughs> Context. By the way, yeah, reverb works really, really nice at nine o'clock. But you can hear it's just a beautiful sounding amplifier. <laughs> Sounds like a kind of plexi with a lot of verb on there to me, and the reverb at ten. Just 
just to run over one other thing as well and um, let me revert back to midday just a mid shift on the dirty channel so here is dirty channel <laughs> Shift works really well on the dirty channel. Mid shift on, this is mid shift off. Mid shift on. Just adds a little bit more width or punch kind of to the to the signal. Um right, um so that is I've covered off everything with the telly. I'm just gonna grab the Les Paul, show you with the Les Paul, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so um we're back with the Les Paul. Um in fact, it's actually a few days later because I had some camera trouble on the last yeah, video shoot, gave it a few days. Um so Playing the Orville 1997 standard Les Paul into the same, exact same setup. So straight into the amp with the, at the moment I have the clean volume on just past noon. And the bass, middle and treble, there's a little bit of bass or mid added, but I'm just going to bring that back and equally equalize them exactly. Bridge pickup. So you could, because this is a Les Paul, maybe want to turn on the bright switch. And it brings something like this. For me, that really brings the guitar to life. I think, actually, it's worth noting that this is a particularly bright Les Paul. Maybe not bright, but lacking in that really typical Les Paul thumping um, mid-range. I absolutely love this guitar. I made a video about it, actually, where I go into that feature of it in more detail. It kind of sounds like a telly on steroids. So... That's kind of the clean channel. Um, I've gone through the EQ already, but you can see that the bright switch in the neutral position guitar sounds a bit dull. Bring the bright switch in. It's a bit, a bit of attack in the top end, even on the neck pickup. So I'm just going to switch it over to the overdrive channel. So here is the overdrive channel. You'll notice actually I've I've actually switched the bright switch off. So this maybe makes for somewhat of an interesting point because guitar sounds better on the clean channel with the bright switch on but when I flick the bright switch on on the dirty channel one could maybe argue for some taste it might be a bit too much top end in that for me it's too much top end in that so what you will probably have to do and I'm not going to do it right now is you would have to Select either the bright switch on or off for your principal tone and then voice the treble so that you find the sweet spot, the best of both worlds for both clean and dirty. That's the dirty tone. Middle selection. And neck. So, as I said, I've gone through a lot of this with Telly already, so um, now we go on to the lead channel. So I'm just going to switch the gain up to the highest position now, and you can see that with the gain set, I mean, it is, it's not up full by any means, but it's set past noon. And high gain sound, but it's not like fizzy or, you know, unpleasantly distorted. I mean, I don't play heavy rock. I play alternative rock for the most part, and I never re I'd, I'd never really use that much of a gain again sound. Makes for a sweet lead sound. So yeah, I think. There's Paul. I'll just do the mid shift lastly, really quickly. I'm not sure, but I'm almost certain that that mid shift isn't foot switchable, but it could be a really cool lead boot. So, yeah. 
that's so that's Paul. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the amp around and talk about some of the connectivity that's on the back of it. Okay, so as you can see, this back of this amp is really crammed with functionality. Um, I've turned powered it off and turned it around, by the way. So you have your power jack just here, and um, there's obviously a fuse. There's the foot switch jack, which is for clean dirty and then between dirty and you know uh, OD plus to get you. You have clean, hit the switch for overdrive and hit the other switch for a lead sound. Then you have a serial effects loop, um, and then it's this section here where I think things get really interesting. So the first output is a emulated speaker output, um, which as you can see has a switch for here for between off axis or on axis, and then a second switch for 112 or 412. Um, I currently have it set for on axis and 112 because I find in the current situation I'm in, that gives a sound that I like the best. So then you also have this direct out no filter, and that is basically a completely unfiltered preamp output that is going into the other channel on my interface and I have a, a cabinet, an IOR on it. Um, and then the last thing here is you have the phone's output obviously which does what it says in the tin and then a two clean guitar amp output. And that is filtered I think that if you want to take the line out of this and plug it into the clean input of another amp it will compensate for the fact that you're playing through another preamp. And then there's obviously four, eight and 16 ohm outputs here to you can run whatever cab you need to use. And then the last thing that's also really useful is there's a switch here to actually speak off or to speak off. There's a switch here to turn off the the speaker load, right? Which allows you to do what I'm doing at home and run the amp with the recording PA output and the, the unfiltered line output to my interface without with all the tubes running and everything and not worry about damaging the transformer of the amplifier by running it without a load. Which I just think is a brilliant solution for a studio amp and you can hear it sounds great so yeah that's the connectivity at the back so the last thing i wanted to mention before i sign off this evening is that for the duration of this video you've been listening to the emulated output directly from the uh, amplifier into my interface in one ear and you've been listening to the direct out that's unfiltered into the other ear but through a lancaster audio IR loader using a line 6 impulse response of a 112 cabinet and I just thought I'd just play again for a sec just to show the difference between what both of them sound like so here is both of them together okay I'm playing the exact same thing here is just the onboard emulated output And here is the direct out using the line six impulse response of a deluxe 112 cabinet. I just thought it would be useful for you to hear that and um, to know how good the emulated output is by itself. Okay, so um, that's kind of it. Uh, I think it's a phenomenal amplifier. Um, I've been using it now in every video I've done for about 10 videos. Uh, it's really versatile and its ability to to do this thing with no speaker load is absolutely invaluable and it means like i said i'm not running a modeler i can use an impulse response if i want to and um, but i don't have to and there's no digital modeling involved there's no menus i have a pedal board on the ground um which has all the pedals i'd need for recording and then i have knobs here to my hand that i can tweak as i see necessary so I would massively recommend if you can get your hands on one, I think it's a brilliant purchase for any studio. Yeah, so that's the Cox Studio Tone 20 head. Um, you've been watching The Guitar Effect. I've been Rob. Please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.